All right, with me in studio is Rob Stretch of Ernst & Young and Professor Jackie Arnser from the University of the Witwatersrand. In our Cape Town studios, Mike Touche from Grant Thornton is standing by. Uh, we're going to be discussing the National Health Insurance Scheme. It did uh, have a mention in the national budget as expected. Let's take a look at some of the comments that came through. Proposals are under review for a national health insurance system as part of the broader restructuring and enhancement of health services. There will be substantial cost implications. The fiscal and financial implications of health system reform and alternative revenue sources will be examined in the year ahead. Mike, uh, the VAT rate, and interesting to note that Finance Minister Pravin Gordon mentioned this. Apparently it is a hot potato. It's been 14% for as long as we can remember, and he was alluding to a, a potential increase to try and fund the NHI through an increase of the VAT rate. Do you think that would be a wise idea? Well, look, I'm, I'm, I was very surprised that he did mention it. You're quite correct. I've always thought it was a taboo subject. Uh, unfortunately, VAT is a bit of a regressive tax, especially to your lower income earners. Um, but, you know, this NHI, NHI is going to cost us a, a big bunch of money, so it's going to have to be funded somewhere. He did mention that he was looking at various options. He might well use a combination of options, one of them might being that he might increase the, the VAT rate slightly. Uh, yeah, other than that... Yeah. Um, Which would you say you know, is, the, is the better it's, option? Um, it's something that, uh, unfortunately, it's not going to go away, and it definitely seems to be government policy now. Yeah. Uh, and so, we, as, as Rob alluded to earlier, um, it's going to have to be paid for, and the only place where it's going to come from is more likely increased in mm -hmm. increases in taxes. Well, I mean, Rob, which do you think is the better option? He was talking about an increase in payroll tax, the VAT rate, or a surcharge on individuals as tax. Yeah. Or do you uh, think it's I, going to be a combination I, I of all three? I think it might be a combination. Um, you know, for some time there's been talk about bringing in differential VAT rates for apply for a higher rate for luxury goods. They've been against it all along because of the fact that it's hard, quite hard to administer, uh, quite difficult to administer that sort of system, but there are a lot of territories that apply it. But you know, it might be that they actually decide to increase the rate by 1%, uh, which mm -hmm. gives them quite a, 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 a lot of money from that. Well, what, what kind of money can we expect from increasing the VAT rate by 1%? That's a significant yeah, it amount. Would be significant, and uh, yeah. given the fact that the NHI is going to cost a significant mm -hmm. amount, we do need to uh, put the funding structures in place, Jackie. Well, absolutely. And I don't, um, even with a 1% increase in the VAT rate, uh, I don't think that's going to be sufficient to cover what we need. Uh, we've seen all sorts of estimates about what will be required, and the minister referred to substantial revenues and costs, but you know, we still have to fine tune the estimates. And I do think that in order to fund that, we're going to have to look at a number of different sources. I think just one route is not sufficient. But of course, the VAT rate is very sensitive. As Mike mentioned, it's a very regressive tax. So you increase that by 1%. Who are you really impacting on most? Across the board, all South Africans, and also that's yes, going to impact the inflation yes. uh, scenario in the country well, as well. Absolutely, it does have an inflationary effect as well. Mm. Yeah. Uh, well, Rob, I mean, overall, when you look at the NHI, do you think it's something that's going to be implemented? The fact mm. that it has been uh, mentioned I, a few I, times? I, I think it will be implemented. I think mm. it might take longer than what they anticipate. Mm. Um, because they, let's assume they get 40 billion rand mm. that they collect. Now, how are they going to spend that? You know, one of the problems you have with the existing delivery is that they just can't spend it. Mm. Where are you going to find the doctors? Where are you going to find the nurses, etc.? So there's still that aspect to consider too. Mm. Well, Mike, what are your sentiments with regards to that? Do you think it is uh, going to come through? And uh, you know, as Rob was alluding to, perhaps we need to get the implementation right and perhaps focus on the job scenario and see if we can get that right as opposed to then looking towards a national health insurance scheme as well. You know, un unfortunately, my, my, my feeling is that once we work out what, what it's going to cost us, we might decide to uh, turn away from it. But I think politically, it's not going to go away. It's been on the, on, the, on the agenda for quite a while now, over two years. Uh, yeah, I just don't think it's going to go away. And somewhere along the line, somebody's going to have to pay for it. Um, and, and it's going to be who's going to pay for it. Um, yeah, so I, I, I personally do, do not think it's going to go away unless there's a major... Uh, political mind change. Mm, or perhaps business uh, will be paying for it in combination with uh, consumers as well. Uh, looking at dividends tax, uh, Mike, it's going to take effect on the 1st of April uh, 2012 and that's replacing the secondary tax on companies. Do you think it's, it's a positive thing? I know uh, David Shapiro was chatting to us a little earlier and he was saying we've got to be careful to not uh, take uh, investment investors and, and make them look elsewhere for those opportunities. Well, I think from a, from a, a tax consulting uh, perspective, it is a, uh, it is a great step forward. 
the legislation has been in place, the implementation date hasn't been around. Uh, you, when you're getting foreign investors coming into this country, you have to explain to them that we've got this STC, uh, STC type tax and it's going to be replaced, but nobody can answer when. So I, I think it does give us a little bit more certainty. You know, initially I think it was going to be implemented last year sometime and then there were talks that it was going to be 2013. So I, it's great that they, they've put a, a peg in the sand. Hopefully they'll stick to it. Um, and I think that, that is, a, it, it is a good thing. At least it gives us a fair amount of certainty. Um, as to how uh, dividends are going to be taxed. Um, and then, <coughs> you know, hopefully they can renegotiate all those, the, the tax treaties that they have been looking at to make sure that the relief that, is, that they've been sought, been looking for, is going to be granted to those jurisdictions um, that they've been negotiating well, And with. Rob, of course, it's a good thing that we, we don't have those question marks hanging over the dividend tax. Do you think but it's just another easy way to... to no, I, I think it's, it's far more acceptable uh, globally to have a dividend withholding tax uh, than an, an STC. I think South Africa mm -hmm. is only one of two countries in the world that has an STC, and foreigners don't understand it. Whereas a dividend withholding tax is readily understood and is very common. And globally. more aligning ourselves now to, to the global mm. issues that have come to the fore. We also heard of a venture capital company uh, income tax in 2009 as well, uh, Jackie. Your view on that, and, and the minister was saying that there was a very poor response to that. Mm. Uh, the approach apparently is now going to be more refined to facilitate greater access to uh, small and medium-sized businesses and junior mining companies as well. Well, I think we had a number of these things, and we've seen this happen over the last few years as well. Some great initiatives, venture uh, capital company initiatives, sounded very promising to start with, but the implementation is very difficult because the access is very difficult, and there's just too many rules and regulations and things that cut people out of of that sort of of the ambit of that provision, and there's a lot of other areas like this as well. So okay. it's something that we could that we could talk about not just with the VCCs, but also across other areas where potentially uh, good initiatives are cut short because they're just overly punitive. Mm, and it's all yeah. about implementation, I suppose, it as is. well. Uh, yeah. Rob, anything for you that was not mentioned that you were quite surprised? And I suppose many were expecting more news on the NHI. Uh, we were expecting uh, quite a bit of news coming through as well from the anti-avoidance perspective. We were looking at the state uh, planning issues as well. What yeah, and, you, I think from the corporate side, there? I don't think there's anything that, that we weren't expecting. I mean, there, there's things... Yeah, I'm glad they're looking at the venture capital companies. Um, they're looking at the R&D tax incentive. I just by reading this, I'm not too sure whether they actually want to make it more restrictive than it is or whether they want to extend it. Uh, but they're also looking at these international headquarter companies, which, you know, South Africa is a great gateway into the rest of Africa. And we're competing with a place like Mauritius. Now, you know, we've been fiddling around with the legislation. We brought it in and it in fact didn't work. We then changed it last year and it still doesn't work. So they're looking at changing it again. Now, that's, you know, let's get it right the first time so mm. we can move on. Mike, did you want to hear some news on the, the regional headquarter companies? Uh, the fact that we didn't really hear much on that, uh, perhaps that put a dampener in it for you? No, look, I think what he, what has been highlighted is that he, that he acknowledges that there are some... Uh, problems with that legislation and that they're going to rectify it. And I agree with Rob, let's try now, if we're going to rectify it, let's rectify it properly so that it does work and that we actually are competitive um, and that does afford the benefits that we want it to do and that it does um, allow, our, allow um, foreign companies to be a, a gateway or springboard into Africa. Mm. So yeah, I think uh, that, that, that is a good sign. Getting to what Rob was saying about the R&D um, uh, allowance. Yeah, I also don't know. It, l looking at it, it initially, it sounded like it was a great idea, but it looks like they're going to be making it more difficult. And, and it mm -hmm. looks like there's, there's a bit of anti-avoidance involved there as well. Mm, yes, well, that's a very good point. Jackie, I see you agreeing there, the yeah. whole anti-avoidance scenario feeding into the R&D space. Well, th this is it, and, and that's the concern that, that uh, actually stifles a lot of these initiatives, and perhaps too much so. We all agree that we need anti-avoidance provisions, but I think sometimes we just tighten these provisions up too much. Mm. Well, looking yeah. at the loopholes that exist within uh, the tax scenarios in, mm. in the country, uh, we keep talking about increasing our tax base and, and taxing and bringing new taxes in. Shouldn't we close up these loopholes mm. and, and get it right? Um, I, I agree with you. I mean, where, where there's blatant loopholes and that sort of thing, it's obviously in the uh, and, and revenues, you know, that's part of their, their ambit, is to actually close those as mm -hmm. best as they can. Um, but I think one's got to be a little bit careful between uh, differentiating between what's a loophole and what is legitimate tax planning. Mm.
Mm. Well, tell us a little bit more about that, Rob. I mean, legitimate tax planning, uh, tax avoidance, tax evasion. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> three <laughs> concepts <coughs> that perhaps have negative stigma, but you, you're talking about uh, proper yeah, tax I, I planning mean, as proper well. Proper tax planning, you know, arranging yeah. one's affairs. There's nothing wrong with arranging your affairs to actually minimize your tax, mm. you know, as opposed to avoidance or falling foul of the anti avoidance legislation. Mm. And I think the anti-avoidance legislation has been beefed up quite a lot. Uh, SARS recently, I think in November or December, had quite a major success in the courts, uh, which they're strutting them around with now. But uh, I think we're going to see more of that sort of feedback coming through from the courts and, and that sort of interpretation. And we've got the tax ombudsman as well, Jackie. Uh, tax avoidance, mm. uh, again, you're talking about tax planning as well. Uh, we also saw a very interesting um, occurrence uh, late mm. last year that have perhaps put tax avoidance under the spotlight more so than before. Uh, how do you see that playing out into 2011? Well, as Rob says, I think there's going to be more and more focus on this. And we're going to see possibly more cases coming to court, more focus in terms of SARS enforcement and so on. And so, yeah, a lot of, a lot of focus on tax avoidance and of course there's also, also the, the argument there is to where do you draw the line between avoidance evasion and this impermissible tax avoidance which is the term that SARS now uses and it then becomes just a bit grey. Mike, yeah. let's get your, your views on that. Sure. <laughs> I, I, yeah, look, I, I, I think SARS, uh, uh, as Rob said, have, have won that case and they, they really are think, they're thinking, well, I think they're quite confident in taking any further ones to court. So what we might more than likely see is a lot more people trying to settle. Mm -hmm. Some of the people, some of institutions might want to try and uh, take advantage of the voluntary disclosure program. Mm -hmm. uh, that could maybe assist them. And in that, that comes to, the, to an end, uh, of, the end yes, of October it's, it's, this year, Mike. It's a hotly mm -hmm. debated topic. Mm -hmm. It's something that you, you find in South Africa that uh, we continually are uh, trying to put a lot of anti-avoidance legislation in place and it sometimes does stifle the, the purpose of the legislation and, and where the legitimate breaks, um, you know, the, the anti-avoidance does possibly impede it. 